Oh. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, we're so glad you can join us um, this morning to worship God together. Here's a few things to note. So please do turn your video on. So if you can, um, so that we can all participate as a community in worship more fully. Please keep your account muted for the service um, unless you're scheduled to share. And also please note that this service will be recorded for sharing purposes. Okay, I now invite everyone to participate in the call to worship from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Thank you. Can I invite Joshua now to lead us in a time of worship? Mute myself. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming early. Uh, now I'll lead us in a time of worship and I really encourage everyone to sing along to worship God together uh, and let's praise him together as we as we sing his praises unto him. So Lord, we really want to thank you for uh, giving us time and a place to really worship you together. Uh, we pray that everyone will be ready to worship you and everyone will be uh, ready to listen to your word later. So we pray, Father, that you will really come into our houses, come into our places, and really fill us with joy as we sing praises unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing, blessed be. Blessed be. Every blessing, yeah, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will truly Blessed be your name, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious Successes like diamonds in my hand, but those trophies could not equal to the grace by which I stand in Christ the Lord. I place my trust and find my glory in the power. The cross in every victory, let it be said of me, my source of strength, my source of hope is Christ the
is Christ the Lord. So Father, we thank you for time of worship and we thank you, Father, for being able to really sing all these praises unto you. We pray as uh, Reverend Ian and Joel leads us in a time of word. We pray that you will come and speak to us uh, in our own hearts. Allow us to really listen to you. And we pray that you will uh, help us be energetic as we listen to your word. Help us to be ready to answer and to listen to you. And we pray, Father, that you will uh, really give us the joy as we listen to you and, and help us to pray, uh, help us to listen uh, carefully to your word. So we pray, Father, that as we as we all gather together today, this morning, uh, you will really be present uh, today on Zoom and in our homes, Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading today is taken from Revelation 2, verses 8 to 11. Revelation 2, verse 8. To the angel of the church is the monarch, Right. These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a sonago of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death. Now give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Thank you, Cornelius, for reading the Word of God so well. Yeah, I am actually so proud of you for being able to read so well. And uh, I hope all of us have heard what he has read because in it, Jesus says, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And I believe that this morning, we are going to hear what God is speaking to us, what Jesus is saying to all of us, not just as a church, but personally as well. So, well, first of all, uh, I want to welcome everyone to our service this morning. Even though it's on Zoom, you know, it's still a very precious time that we can connect with each other. And I'm sure you'll be blessed today. Well, just to give you a background, we as a church are continuing in our series uh, on the book of Revelation. And right now, we have a mini-series within the entire series. So this mini-series is the letter of Jesus to the seven churches. And um, last week, we kind of uh, explored why these seven churches uh, are important or why Jesus wrote to the, seven, to the seven churches. And this is because the seven, the seven churches are actually representative you know, of all the churches in the world today. These seven churches uh, are you know, in the midst of a multicultural, multi-religious society. And we, all of our churches today are in that situation. And more than that, the churches face many situations, many different situations, which we'll find out as we go along in the different weeks. Some face persecution and pressure from the outside. People are forcing them to do things that they don't want to do. Some face challenges from the inside. You know, there are uh, compromises and uh, temptations. So it really reflects what we are going through as a church. And, um, you know, worst of all is that all these seven churches are actually in a place where Satan's activity is very real. And so sometimes, actually many times, when we look around the world today, we see that evil is really all throughout the world. And there is much suffering as well. So uh, these seven churches represent all of us at this time. And Jesus' letters to the seven churches is, you know what? I have for you not just to survive, 
but to thrive and to grow. And I believe that as we study these seven letters, we are challenged to grow as well and to survive, not just to survive, but to grow as a church. And these seven letters all also have a common characteristic. So they first of all start with the characteristics of Christ, who Christ is. Then they go on to the condition of the church. Jesus tells them, okay, this is something good that is going on, well done. This is something bad, you know, you need to change. And then he goes on to the call and consequences, which means that he tells them, okay, how can you change? And if you do not change, what will happen? And if you change, then you will receive the commendation that is going to come, which is all the promises and rewards. So I really encourage you all to study these uh, seven letters for yourself with these four points. You know, just like I've done, I've actually listed out all the four points of all seven churches and really compared. And I've found so much joy and so much learning for myself. And today we come to the church in Smyrna. Very interesting because this church has got nothing bad about it. Jesus did not criticize this church for anything. Instead, everything is praise and um and commendation and affirmation for the church. Now, we'll find out later why. But I'd like to start this morning's sermon to everyone with this question. Have you ever found yourself in a dangerous situation before? Have you ever found yourself in a dangerous situation before? Just like this kid who is actually sitting on the edge. Wow, you know, this is really dangerous. Now, if you have, feel free to share your dangerous situation uh, in the chat group. You know, this is the beauty of Zoom. We can actually communicate, interact, read each other's uh, comments. So feel free to type it out. Well, for myself, I want to share what is a dangerous situation that I've been in before. A vivid experience I remember was in 2012 when I brought a group of students to climb this mountain called Mount Ophir. And this was part of a leadership training camp. Now, actually, this mountain, uh, although in Malaysia, is actually a, quite a difficult mountain to climb. And I think it is the tallest mountain in the, the state of Johor. Anyway, uh, these students that I brought, they are actually quite mature. They are junior college students. And then they are also the leaders as well. So. Uh, it should be quite safe. But the thing is, what uh, seemed to be safe at first turned out to be quite dangerous. And I will give, I'll tell you a bit more. So we first climbed up the mountain and set our tents at the midpoint of the mountain because, you know, it's very difficult to climb up and down in one day. So early the next morning, we set off for the summit. We wanted to climb up to the summit and then to come down, break camp, and then go back to the base camp at the foot of the mountain. So everything went according to plan. And uh, we set off at dawn and then reached the top of the mountain. And when we reached the top of the mountain, it was so beautiful. I mean, the, um, the view was so good. You could see all the way to, uh, to Malacca from the top of Mount Ophir. And so, the students and myself, you know, we, we had such a great time. We were on top of the mountain and then we were taking photos and, um, you know, and just enjoying the time. You know, thanks Cornelius. Yeah, you also feel that it is uh, dangerous to rock, rock climb. But for us, you know, uh, the danger is coming up soon. So anyway, we were all, um, we were all, uh, having a good time at the top of the mountain. And then we decided, okay, after lunch, let's go down. Now, at this time, the trouble started. The rain started to pour. And then it started to really rain very heavily. It was like water, somebody switched on the tap in heaven. And then the water just poured down. It was not even a rain. It was a pouring rain. And I could see literally uh, as I was climbing down, uh, rivers of water, you know, just streams of water just flowing past me. And of course, you know, um, it was just pouring down uh, my face as well. 
And as I was climbing down, I'm like wondering, oh God, how are we going to get down safely? Because everything now is so slippery. And all of the students, I have no idea how they are doing because we have to climb down in a single file uh, because the path was very narrow. And I had no idea whether they are surviving or not, you know, at the back or in front of me. And anyway, as I kept climbing down, I see stragglers all the time. So suddenly students will appear from nowhere in the midst of the jungle and the forest and then come to me and say, Mr. Chu, uh, we lost our group. Can we join you? Then, of course, I'll say, sure, sure, join me, you know, so that, you know, I can uh, bring you down. But in my heart, I was like panicking. I'm like, whoa, how many people are lost in the jungle? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is really dangerous. So by the time we reached our campsite in the midpoint, it was already evening. Oh, it took such a long time to climb down. And um, the sun was setting and it was getting dark. And I knew that, uh, you know, we had to cross this waterfall. And this waterfall uh, looks like this. Looks something like this, okay? Because uh, the rain was like, had come down, so the waterfall was actually quite uh, heavy. And we had to cross the waterfall. And I knew that we needed light to cross the waterfall, or else it's very dangerous. If anybody falls into it, he or she will get washed away. Wow, very dangerous. But I also know that it is more dangerous to stay on the mountain because we don't have any food or water left. We only plan to stay up there for one day. And secondly, all of our clothes and bags were all soaking wet. If we were to stay on the mountain, we may suffer from hypothermia. So it may get very cold. It will get very cold at night. And, you know, I don't know what will happen. So... I decided that, okay, the greater danger is to stay on the mountain. We need to cross the river. So I gathered all the students together and I said, okay, everyone, we need to pack up everything uh, here and everybody got to get to work and we got to cross the river in, or the waterfall in 15 minutes. So I give you 15 minutes, go and pack up everything. Nobody should be slacking. Everybody should be getting to work. And they could sense the urgency in my voice. And they all, to their credit, all went about and they packed up everything. They helped each other. And within 15 minutes, they were all ready uh, to cross. And so we crossed the, the waterfall. Uh, and I had like the bigger size guys stand on top of two rocks. So to help the girls to jump across the rocks as well. And when the last person crossed the big rock, to jump across, it became, uh, you know, the sun set completely. And thank God, we all crossed safely. And, uh, you know, we continued back to our base camp. So, one thing I learned through this experience was that in the midst of facing many dangerous situations, I need to recognize what the greater danger was and to try to prepare myself or the students uh, to, to face it or to avoid the danger. And it was the same for the church in Smyrna. The church in Smyrna was in danger, as we have uh, heard from um, Cornelius. And these were the dangers. Firstly, everyone in the Roman Empire had to join in the worship of, of the Roman emperor. Not to do so was considered treason and can be punished, punished by imprisonment or even death. And this is especially so for this city, the city of Smyrna. They were the most loyal of all the seven cities. In fact, they were the first to build a temple for the goddess of Rome in uh, 195 BC. And then they also won a competition. Imagine that they won a competition to build uh, a temple for uh, the Roman Emperor Tiberius. So among the seven cities, everybody said, oh, we want to build the, the temple. But in the end, the emperor decided, okay, Smyrna, because you are the most loyal to me. So they have this saying, Rome first in all things. So you can imagine this city. And this city 
was very dangerous for Christians because Christians have to worship the emperor or else they will be persecuted very badly. And because they found that emperor worship, okay, because Christians believe that emperor worship is idolatry, so they will not worship. And this made the authorities very angry and upset with the Christians. And not only that, the Jews also hated the Christians in this city. So there are also Jews uh, throughout the Roman Empire. And the Jews are given a special permission to not worship the Roman emperor. They are the only religious organization that are given the special permission. And so these Christians uh, are also not worshipping and the Jews are very scared. They're scared. Okay, you know, the Romans may see that more and more people don't want to worship the Roman Empire and may take away all the privileges from us. So they will actively report on all the Christians. And all the more, the Jews hated the Christians because they find that the Christians are a, you know, are a, a heretical sect. You know, they are not part of the Jews at all. They, they are, their beliefs are deviant. So they will actively persecute and um, report them to the authorities. No wonder Jesus says they are a synagogue of Satan. You know, they are not Jews, but a synagogue of Satan. But worst of all was that these, uh, these Christians, they are really the poorest of the poor. They have no access to any help at all. And they could be poor because, you know, um, they, they were poor to begin with. When they entered the church, they were the poorest people. Or they could be poor also because the authorities just confiscated everything that belongs to them. And so um, they were desperately poor and really have no help. But the amazing thing was Jesus says, I know your afflictions and your poverty, but you are rich. You know, so sometimes in our own lives, we may think one way. People may think of us one way, but the Lord Jesus actually views us in a very different light. And so we need to know what the mind of Christ is. And we need to know what the opinions of Christ is for us. He views things very dif differently from people. So Jesus is basically encouraging the church in Smyrna with these words. You would think that these dangers are great and you are tempted to avoid these dangers. Maybe you can avoid them by compromising or even just worshipping uh, the Roman emperor and all will be well. But Jesus is telling them, there is a greater danger. You know, there's a greater danger. And it is the danger of experiencing the second death. Now, what is the second death? The Bible terms the second death as the eternal death, which is after the physical death of our bodies. And Jesus alludes to this when he ends ended his letter with this promise. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. So, you know, this is the greater danger. Escape the second death. You may face many dangers in your society, but the second death is much more dangerous and you should escape it. So, what exactly is the second death? Well, Jesus explains what the second death is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. He says this, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Well, hell, my friends, is real. It, together with heaven, is a state of existence for all of us after we die. And Jesus spoke about hell a lot. And he should know about this because he's the one who came from heaven and he knows what is waiting for all humanity on the other side of life. And so hell or the second death is the greater danger. In other words, Jesus is saying to the church and to us as well, have the true perspective. Know the greater danger. 
it is not the suffering that you go through in your life right now. It is not the persecutions. It is not the rejection. It is not the difficulties or the tribulations. It is, it is the second death. It is hell that is the greater danger. It is the killing of your body and soul in hell. So don't compromise or don't even give up on your faith. Instead, be faithful to me in all circumstances to the end. And I will give you the crown of life and you will escape the second death. This is the greater danger and this is what you escape. So, at this point, you might wonder, how is this applicable to our lives? How is the letter of Jesus to the church in Smyrna applicable to our lives right now? And right now, I would like to invite Joel to share with us how this can be applicable in our lives. Okay. Good morning, guys. Let me pull up my slides. Can you hear me? Is it too loud or too soft? Please tell me. I'm very nervous. Yes. Okay. Can you see the slides? Okay. So thank you, Reverend Ian. This is my first time preaching at MSS. So let me introduce myself. Why oh, I cannot. I must click. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so a bit more about myself, uh, fam for my family, my home church, and my ministry. So family, I think maybe you recognize some of them. They attend MSS too. Yeah. And my home church is actually MSS. And uh, this is my ministry. So I do a lot of youth work because I am a youth. As you can see in this picture here, it says behind, have fun. So let's have fun today. Oh my goodness. I really feel like... Okay, okay back to the message. So first, we have to put uh, into perspectives what are some of the dangers uh, that we face today. So as Christians, uh, we recognize that um, our brothers and sisters in other countries, we don't have to look too far to see that they are facing grave dangers uh, because of COVID or even persecution uh, for being a Christian from different uh, authorities or different things. And we thank God that in Singapore, we are kept safe and we are able to express our faith as Christians uh, freely. But that doesn't mean that we as Christians here in Singapore we will not face our own challenges. So you can see here, our minister is telling us to okay, okay, slow down, huh, guys. Yes, so <laughs> what do we do when we face uh, these dangers? Uh, this uh, brings me to two points that I have for us today that we can take from uh, today's message. So first, uh, we look at those that have gone before us and we see that uh, Jesus is faithful to us. So let me introduce us to this guy called Polycarp, Saint Polycarp. So he's a bishop of Smyrna, which is the church uh, we, that the letter was to today. So he's the first bishop. And this guy is basically a legend. Uh, he's one of the big three uh, apostles. What? Sorry. Oh, yeah. He's one of the big three chief apostolic fathers. So if you uh, wiki this guy, you'll be like, oh, this guy is oh, the, the like pioneers, you know, pioneer generation of the Church of Christians. Yes. Uh, but on his wiki page, there's something interesting. So he says that he is a martyr, which means he died for the faith. And so what happened is actually the Roman Empire, which what uh, Ian said just now, asked him to like, give his allegiance to, to, the, to the then uh, Roman Emperor and deny Christ. And this is what he said. 80 and 6 years I have served him. So it's 86 in old speak. And he has done me no wrong. So this he is, research, uh, is referring to Christ. So although he was 86 years a Christian, that means maybe even longer as a, as a person. So he maybe just like 90 or something. Yeah. He still uh, faced death head on. And then he was executed. Uh. And Polycarp was also inspired by Jesus. So we all know what the story of Jesus and how he was obedient 
even until the point of death on the cross. And in doing so, he saved us, me and you, from the second death. And that's how Polycarp was so inspired to um, be obedient to and face uh, dangers uh, head on because he knew the greater danger. And now we, like Polycarp, can also do the same. But how can we do this? How can we be not afraid of the first bodily death? Okay, this brings me to a second point, which is having faith. So here I'm going to share a personal story with everybody. So in JC, this is me. <laughs> in JC, I was, uh, before A-levels, I was in a dangerous situation because my grades were quite terrible and time was running out to study. So for economics, right, like econs, I employed the help of a tuition teacher who was supposed to be able to help students jump many grades when they take the A-levels. So I went, attended his class, then follow what he say. But the thing is, during prelim exams, I wrote the way that he, he asked to write, and I didn't do very well. I think I got E. Yeah, so just pass. And then I, I panicked, so I take my paper, right? Then I discussed with my teacher, and then she said, oh, this is not good, not good. Then after that, I went to the tuition teacher, and then I passed the paper to him. I say, how? Uh, this person is uh, not... My grades are so trash. Then after that, he basically told me, okay, don't worry. Just write like this. Continue writing like this during the A-level, and you will do well. And then, deep down, I started thinking, this is just ridiculous. Like, you asked me to write like this, right? And pretty much I do, like, trash. So, I was, I was uh, in a predicament. So, should I trust him? Then, I, I thought back, okay, what do I know about this tuition teacher? I know that he's a good track record, my brother and his friends, <laughs> of helping them jump many grades for their economics. And also, he writes the 10 year series answer key. So, I was like, okay, I should trust him. Should trust him because I know who he is and what he can, uh, in a sense, what he can do. Yeah. And lo and behold, <laughs> I got A for econs during A levels. Yay. Okay. That's uh, some bragging there. Okay. But this is not to say that this tuition teacher or like a plug for him or saying that this tuition teacher is econs Jesus. No, no, no. <laughs> My point is that there are some parallels and just like how I trusted in uh, this econs teacher to bring my grades up, we can also trust in Jesus uh, to help us in our situations, our dangerous situations in life. Yes. So if we extend this analogy a bit further, the prelim exam is kind of like the first death. So I died during the prelim exams. But it doesn't matter because it didn't affect my A-level grades. So for us, if we die the first death, the bodily death, it doesn't matter because Jesus has saved us from the second death, but only if we remain faithful to him. And this is what uh, we're trying to put into perspective uh, here today, uh, Reverend Ian and myself, which is knowing the greater danger. So Reverend Ian knew that getting the kids or the JC kids off the mountain, even going through a dangerous waterfall was most important. And Jesus knew that the people were being persecuted in Smyrna. They were poor and it was terrible, but he knew that it is more important for them to keep their faith because the greater danger lies beyond the first death. And the Bishop of Polycarp, Bishop of Polycarp. Bishop Polycarp also knew this. So um, he was burnt at the stake because he did not deny Jesus. And yet before his death, his fiery death, he knew the greater danger. He said to his uh, persecutors, you threaten me with a fire that burns for a season, which is this fire that is burning him. But... You, okay, okay, this is what he said. You threaten me with a fire that burns for a season and after a little while is quenched. But you are ignorant of the fire of everlasting punishment that is prepared for the wicked. So what he was talking about is the second death, which is the eternal fires of hell. So um, 
after asking us to be willing to face the first death head on and to die for the faith with a lot of faith myself, I think some encouragement and assurance is due. And I can't just ask you to die and then have no encouragement or assurance. So here's some encouragement. Uh, and I'll start ending with this. So if we go back to the letter or the passage today, in verse 8, Jesus says, I know your tribulation and your poverty. So Jesus himself says that he knows what you are going through or what the people of uh, Smyrna were going through. And Jesus is not some far away God um, but one who knows our struggles and he even knew that they were being persecuted by their enemies. And this is the same God today who tells you that he knows your struggles and he knows what you are going through. And then this same God also tells us not to fear and to be faithful until death. And what happens when we are faithful until death? Our assurance is this, that Jesus himself will give us the crown of life. So this is the Medal of Honor um, that the President gives in the US. So Jesus himself will give us the crown of life if we are faithful to the point of death. Yes. So now if uh, I'm with this knowledge of the greater danger and also I'm with faith that um, Jesus can bring us through and will save us from the second death if we are faithful to him. I believe that all of us here, uh, we can be faithful to the end. And this is our youth camp team for 2018. Like all of us here, and even those that have yet to join us during 2018, I believe all of us in MSS can be faithful until the point of the first death. And Jesus himself, will give us the crown of life. So, uh, I'm going to pray for two groups of people uh, specifically. So, the first group is this. Um, if you are struggling in your faith for whatever reason, uh, be it uh, in constant sin or you doubt Jesus' uh, ability to save you or help you, or maybe you feel inadequate to be saved or to be called a child of God. And especially if you are going through persecution, um, I want to tell you that Jesus sees your struggle and he knows and he's telling you, don't give up, hold on and conquer. And the second death cannot touch you. And the second group of people is, uh, if you have yet to know Jesus personally as your Lord and Savior, uh, he is calling to you to be faithful to him so that um, you can join in this salvation and this joy of having the encouragement while we are still living on earth to face any grave dangers and then having the assurance enough to face death head on when um, struggles come our way. So it sounds crazy and dramatic to die for the faith or to die for something that is almost intangible. Um, but that's what Jesus did for us. He died for us, for our sins, so that um, he can save us from the second death. So if you are willing to give your life to Jesus, uh, just as he laid down his life for us, you can join me in a prayer. Yeah, I know this is a big step, and it's probably the biggest step that we will ever take uh, in this life. But it's also the most important step because we know the greater danger beyond life uh, on this earth. So uh, let us pray. God, we thank you that you reveal to us the greater danger beyond what we can see in this life. And that you have saved us from the second death. So I pray first um, for everyone who is struggling in their faith. For everyone that has, is going through a difficult time of, of being faithful to you and serving you. And the situation now is one of many uncertainties and a lot of changes. But I pray 
that throughout all these things that we will be able to remain faithful because you show yourself faithful to us. And I pray that in all these struggles, um, I pray against the lies of the devil. And I pray that we will know the truth that you have told us. We will know that you are looking out for us and that you know what we are going through. And, and that you have saved us from the second death and that you are here with us in this life to face any danger. So I pray for all my brothers and sisters who are struggling that we will have this faith and assurance to serve you and be faithful to the end. And now I would like to invite all those who want to uh, give your life to Jesus to pray along uh, with me. Yeah, uh, Not forcing you, but I believe that this is a very important thing for all of us to commit ourselves to, to God. Yes, so you can pray along. So God, we thank you that you have saved us. And we know that we are sinful and do not deserve to be uh, saved. But you are the same Lord who looks out for us and who wants to have this relationship with us and who wants to save all of us from the second death to have eternal life with you. So we pray now that... Um, we will let down our guard and that we will invite you into our lives to lead us in this life and then to save us uh, in the life to come. So I pray that you will just come now and take your rightful place in our hearts as uh, our Lord and Savior. And we thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I invite everyone to sing uh, this song of response. It's Oh Praise the Name. Oh Praise the Name, it, it, it really tells you how God will, how God is going to come back, how how we have to be faithful to the end and that's the message that uh, Joel and Ian has been uh, speaking with us today. So I, I hope that you will sing this song of response together and it will really speak to you. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stones Messiah still and all alone are you ready to praise the name together? Praise the name of the Lord our God Oh, praise His name forevermore For endless days We will sing Your praise Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God Son of heaven rose again. Oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels. 
angels roll for Christ the King. No praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forever. Josh, Joel, and Ian for the worship song and also for the sermon. And now we'll move on to announcements. So first up, we'll have the MSS July to August service schedule. Um, so as you can see, the next few Sundays will continue to be on Zoom. So um, yes, the link is the same um, and you'll always find us here every Sunday. And next week, we actually have Chloe co-preaching with Ian so that's going to be super exciting um, and uh, yeah Joelle did such a wonderful job today as well so you can join us and see what's next Woo! Uh, okay and then next we have our time uh, of offering <clears throat> so this is our time where we um, set money aside um, uh, for the church and to be able to help uh, like build um churches around the world and to uh really service the lord's work um around and everything like that so i'll just give everybody a couple of minutes to scan the pay now app to be uh, able to um give their tidings um but also if you do not have a bank account and you cannot scan the pay now app you can also like bella mentioned last week uh save that cash aside and then you can uh when everybody goes back on site um to church again you can Put it in the offering bag yes so give you a couple of minutes Okay, and then now I'll just close this time in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the work that you do, Lord. We thank you that um, we are here on earth to be able to praise you and that we are able to worship you through um, 
the work that you've taught us to to do as well. We just pray and uphold to you um, the money that we give uh, with our offering, Lord. Let it be as a form of worship and blessing unto people around us and a worship unto you as well, Lord. Um, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. And then now um, we will have um, Reverend Ian with the closing prayer and the benediction. Well, thanks. Uh... Thanks, Ned, for leading us in today's service. Well, before I uh, pray for the end of the service, as well as uh, give the benediction, I just want to give another announcement, which is this. Just this week, I, we have received the, the instruction from the bishop uh, that I will be posted to Church of the Ascension with effect from 1st of January, 2022. So it is something like the army when the army posts somebody to another unit, uh, we have to go. So in the same way, uh, I have received my posting and I'll be going to Church of the Ascension uh, next year. And in the meantime, uh, we have identified a new youth pastor and I will be giving you more details as well as uh, how this entire process will, 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 con uh, will, will take place from today till the end of the year. But please be rest assured, I will continue to be your pastor and also to lead the church until the end of the year. And I think at this time, I just want to say how privileged and how uh, humble and glad I am to be your pastor for the past four years. And for the past four years, I've seen many of you all grow, not just spiritually, but in maturity as well. And I have also witness many new people come and join the church. You know, I really believe that God has such a wonderful plan and purpose for you. Such a great plan and purpose that you have not even seen or even discovered. And I believe that God will show it to you in the days to come. And He will do this because He's the faithful God. And all you have to do is like what? Uh, Joel and myself have preached to you today. Stay close to Jesus. Put him as your first love in your life and give him your priority, not just in your personal life, but as a church. And you'll begin to discover the blessings that he has for you. And with this, uh, I want to especially pray a special prayer for all of y'all as youths as we celebrate Youth Sunday today. Because youth is such a precious gift that God has given to us. And it's a gift for us to serve Him and to serve others, not simply ourselves. And by doing this, we will make our lives uh, the most fulfilling and meaningful and make it count. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we offer to you, loving God, the gifts and needs of youth. Bless them with your guiding grace as they face the challenges and opportunities in their lives. Touch their hearts with the gentleness of your love, that they may know that they are valued and valuable beings. Send your spirit of hope into their lives, that they may believe in themselves and know they are needed in this world. Grace them with the gift of joy, that they may celebrate life through laughter and tears alike. Guide us as we continue to grow in appreciation of the many gifts of young people in the ministry opportunities you offer to them. In the journey of faith, we walk with them. In our shared mission as a community called to discipleship in the world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friends, let's receive the blessing of God. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in love and faith. Defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, friends, we have come to the end of our service for today. And we thank you all for participating in this service. And as you participate, I really believe God has deposited a seed of faith in all of your hearts to live for him this week. 
But we have not Let's ended have some our service. Games, please. Yeah, we have not ended. Games. Yes, we have not ended our service. We want to invite all of y'all to join us for a time of fellowship over games. And right now, I want to invite Shamin, uh, Shamin, Shamin, Shamin. No, it's a uh, Chloe and uh, Xavier to lead us in this time of games. Oh yes. Yes, hi everyone. Thanks for staying for the games. Um, yeah, today will be special because we are, we are going to do a youth camp theme game. So, um, yeah, today we'll be revealing the youth camp com. So, uh, if you want to earn points for your future group, so uh, just like, type in your answers for who you think is like the answer lah. Okay. Yes, very creative. Yes. Um. Okay. Yeah, so you have here the instructions. Guess who the person is based on their baby photos and type your answers in the chat box. And the first person who gets it, for each person, I'll, I'll give like, I don't know, 100 points or something. But I will... <laughs> no, uh, uh, I, me and Xavier will not be in the baby photos, yes, obviously. Not yes, okay. Um, 100 points, I don't know. See how. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay, okay. guess. Who's guess this? who is this? What the? Hey, wait, so hey, how are you? What? How are you? I'm so fast. Okay, yes, correct. Um, it is Gabriel. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You're not Gabriel since you are no fair. Mm, oh, yeah. Huh? Hey, not fair. Okay, okay. Never mind. Next. Hey, once you, once you guess, you cannot guess again. Uh. Okay, who is this? Good chance. Oh, oh someone got it. it. Oh, who is it? Someone got it. Uh, okay, Audrey got, got it. it. Audrey yeah. got it. Audrey got it first. Uh? Yes. Oh, okay, Audrey. Hey, good job. It's Sam. Eh, sorry. Yeah, eh, yeah, Audrey. Good. Not from Audrey. I cannot see. Yeah, Audrey. Okay. Okay, okay who is this? Joash. <laughs> no, it's not Joash. Oh, by the way, we forgot to mention that uh the the camp com uh includes like people from uh the Chinese New Life Service and Ooh, uh sorry. and uh Yasha and uh. Elizabeth got yeah. it. Yes, Elizabeth. Good job. It's Wei Zheng. His nickname is Buddy, apparently. Okay, this one. This one is also quite hard. Chow, Chester. No, Chester was in last year already. Wow, if you can get this, uh, it's quite amazing. No, it's yeah. not Chow. Okay, okay, this will be quite hard, so we'll give a hint. Uh, it's from Chinese. What cell? Hey, wait, I saw the answer somewhere. Chester got it. Chester, ah. okay, good job, oh. Chester. Uh, yes, this is Matthias. Yeah, so. Matthias. Yeah, so if you, yeah, if you don't know who this is, uh, you have to come for you to find out. Okay, next. Yes, who's this? Uh, who is saluting? Hey, yes, it's real, but hey, not supposed to guess two times, lah. How do you get so fast? I can't, I couldn't even tell. Okay, first one, Joel, second one, Joel, okay. Okay, yes, it's real. Oh, this one. Yes, who's this? No, not Charmaine. Come on. If you think about it, you'll know. If you look at a screen properly, maybe you'll know. What Wanda wishes to be in Chemcom? <laughs> Jose look like look one of the pastors. Look like one of the pastors. Like the the, the no. person is here right now. Look like one of the pastor. Right. Ian! Like no! <laughs> it's not Ian. Ian? Ah, yeah, guess who's yes. good? Yes! Oh, it's Alicia. Good job. Alicia. Yeah, she's showing the slides right now. Why Why are you all doing? Okay, never mind. Okay, yes, yeah, seventh member. Yeah, just now, they look like Reverend David, man. What? <laughs> A bit, what? <laughs> Okay, this one is from Chinese. Since, yeah, it's gonna be quite hard. One. What? No, it's not one. 
Yeah, this one. Yeah, it's quite hard lah. Can give me? I... Oh, oh, oh. Yes, it, uh, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth. It's Jaira. Yeah, okay. So don't worry. Just meet him in when you come for youth camp. 10 to 12 December, everyone. Yeah, that's why I need to go youth camp. Okay, last one. Yeah, guess who? Oh, Bella one. got it. Yeah, good job, Bella. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Why not fair? <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is just all of us. So this year is a very big comp because it's going to be a big camp. Is. Yes, it's a combination yeah, of babies and me. Oh yeah. Okay. Can go back to Eileen's picture. That is Eunice. The last baby is Eunice. Can you please go back to Eileen's picture? The other one. The other one. Oh, oh so cute. Yes, this one. That's <laughs> so easy one. <laughs> it's so easy. Actually, yeah, no, this one is crazy. Not. That is just so easy, no. man. No. It's so close, easy. Close the games in prayer. I smell red. Eh. I smell red. I think Bella got the photo in advance. Okay. Don't be such a hater, la. Yeah, I, I guess that's it, right? Yes, that's it. Yes, and yeah, yes. thanks everyone for playing and staying for the games. And yeah, just remember to block out 10 to 12 December so we can all come for youth camp together. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right, thank okay. you. Oh, thank you, everyone. All right, all right, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Chloe and Xavier uh, for leading the comm as well. Um, okay, and God bless everyone. God bless all of y'all for this coming week, especially tomorrow, which is Youth Day. Have a very blessed Youth Day holiday for those who are studying. Okay, and also have a blessed uh, cell group meeting after this, everyone. Okay, goodbye.